If you can please take that fourth place award, the fourth place check for $2,000 to our fourth place finisher, Arash Rafar. All right, well, a lot of us start coming in. That last year's runner up, Arash Rafar, was one of the favorites to win this title. What happened to Arash? How important is this next show for you? It's very important. For me, one word comes to mind redemption. Redeem myself from the 2017 Olympia. Show the world what I can bring. I don't think the world has seen me at my best, or even 90%. Even the shows that I won, Pittsburgh and New York, I don't think I was anything close to my best. I think the best is yet to come. Arash has been here for about four years. A lot of potential. I mean, I saw it from day one. He has beautiful shape, beautiful structure. He just has to not worry about getting so big. He has to worry about condition. I think he worries sometimes about getting a little too full, and that hurts him. If he comes in in really, really sharp condition, he's a very dangerous bodybuilder. I've learned and I've had a lot of bumps in my road. I've prospered and I've had some downfalls. I don't think anything in life is difficult. I think we make it difficult with our shortcomings, our insecurities, our overthinking. I don't care what diet you do. I don't care what kind of training you do. What I care about is how you do it. How focused you are, how intense, how consistent, and how much you believe in your protocols and in yourself. If your athlete succeeds, hey, you know, my coach is awesome. If your athlete fails, it's the coach's fault. I mean, you see it, it happens all the time in the industry. Which I just want to give the best I can to each athlete, and then however the, the placings fall, they fall. But, you know, if I bring them on stage looking the best they've ever been and better than they were the last time, that's, that's my goal. Then I did my job. Up. Up. Come on, Rich. Up. Three more. The Arnold Classic is a very prestigious show. So of course I want that title. So for me, this is, this is a chance to redeem myself, to show the world, the fans, and myself what I can bring on stage and what I will bring on stage. This is an amazing leg workout. In general, probably our best leg workout in the past like month and a half which is a really big deal because I just got back from Dubai. So I did my best to really sleep, recover, eat, rest the past 24 hours for today's leg workout. Just messed up sleeping patterns and my own bed. Every morning waking up achy, I don't want to train legs and risk having a bad workout and tweaking something. So I wouldn't not train them for two weeks. It was only five days. Rosh was very, very to himself, kind of shy, kind of quiet. I think when he started competing and he started getting success, he came out of his shell. I don't want you to wait too long though, if you gotta go. And he became um, a much more, I don't want to say approachable, because he was always approachable, but he was always a little bit of a shy guy. He's not shy no more. He talks to all the members, all the members really like him. He's uh, very approachable, always helping people, always talking, always giving his point of view. And, He's a really good member and you're really happy to have him here. No, no. I think I progressed a lot from 16 to 17 and I brought up my physique. I just was really off. I had a yes. hard time the last week and I was flat as a pancake. That being said, I will be more conditioned. That's all you need. I know the mistakes that I made, so I won't make them again. I'm sure you won't. Yeah. All right, perfect. I'm glad to hear that. But, uh, when I, you know, a little bit closer, I'll come and have you take a look at me. Okay. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you'll be ready a couple of weeks before. Yeah, I want to nail those, those poses that we went over. I'm just getting started. I think 2017 was a step back for me. I didn't peak for the show. I didn't look great. And I got what I deserved. I, you know, I won't make the same mistakes again. I see my, my career just beginning. If anyone has, has followed my career thus far, I'm consistently growing and getting better. And my physique is coming into its own, so to speak. I'll tell you right now, Brian, Chris Bumstead, and George Peterson beat me. Not one day since the 2017 Olympia have I thought about those three. Not once. I don't 
I want to be great. I want to win by a long shot. I want to make history. So for me, I'm not competing against them. If I can bring in my best, I'm confident I can be victorious. I think about being on stage you know, when I'm in my prep all day long, when I train, when I do cardio, and I literally get goosebumps. And it drives me to, to, to work harder. I'm a fat kid at heart. I love food, I love sweets, and I'm a big eater, which can be very dangerous. You'll never have to catch me eating a slice of cake. I will eat the whole cake. So for me, it's much easier to be an extremist and be all or nothing. It's easier for me to be very, very clean and not take it there, you know? My body type, I can't eat like uh, a lot of my friends that you know go out and eat junk and stuff in the off season. I put on fatties, you know, get really big. Uh, in classic physique, we have a weight limit. So my schedule in prep and since the Olympia, I've kept it pretty, this, pretty much the same. I get up about six in the morning. I have some branch chain amino acids and glutamine. And lately I've been doing chicken. So the cardio is not fully fasted. I've been doing four ounces of chicken. I head over to the gym. I do my cardio, nothing too intense, but I break a sweat and get the heart rate up. Then I do abs and I stretch. That whole session will take an hour to an hour and a half. Steady state cardio does work, it is effective. If you're dieting hard and you're training hard, it'll help. But the issue with steady state is that, one, most people don't make it difficult. They hold on, they do this, or they go really high incline and they do this. It's way too easy. You need to make it difficult. You can hear my breathing that I am panting a little bit, and this isn't just a regular walk. So you need to make it difficult. You need to get your heart rate up. But the issue is you become efficient. So a lot of people will walk or jog and after a few days, few weeks, they think they're getting in better shape because it's easier. But we're not trying to become efficient and last longer. We're trying to burn calories. So if you do something every single day and you're efficient at it, you're not really burning calories. That's why if you guys pay attention to people in your gym, the people that jog on treadmills, most of the time, they, they never progress. They always look the same as far as body composition, body fat. So I mix up steady state and hit. So here is a decline hammer strength. Seating position is very important here because if you're seating too high, it's gonna be way too easy. Range of motion will be shortened way too much. Now, a very important tip about decline. Everyone thinks decline chest is for the lower chest. It's not true. You gotta look at the pec this way. Decline, the bottom pec inserts here, insert. Insert, 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 insert. So upper, mid, and lower. Anytime you bring the two ends of a muscle together, is how you contract it. Bicep, closer together contraction. So if I'm pulling a weight up, I'm shortening the distance between the upper fibers and the insertion point. So from down to up is really gonna hit the upper chest, whereas people think these and these is for your lower chest. If I'm pressing decline, again, same thing. So decline is not necessarily just for the lower chest. It'll train the whole chest and it's a very good exercise if done properly, but most people on hammer strengths or free weights, they'll come real low and their range of motion is shortened. That's why a lot of you are so strong on decline. Bring the bar up to here and you'll see how much harder it is. So we're heading over to Merrick Woods Chiropractic. Uh, my chiropractor, Stephen Cohen. He's been working on me for over a year and a half now. He worked on me going all the way up to the Olympia throughout my whole prep. What's up, bud? What up? Hey, how you doing? Two minutes, okay? No problem, take your time. Now, I don't do chiropractic work with him. What he actually does on me mainly is Graston. He works on me with Graston tools, and uh, it's been a big, big help. I've gone through many different physical therapists, many different doctors, and, and he's one of the best that I've stuck with. So what we're doing right now is we're doing a little Graston. Uh, Graston is a soft tissue technique that works on the fascia. It does not work on the muscles. People mistakenly think it works on the muscles, but it's gonna work on the fascia. In this particular instance, we're gonna be doing some static stuff, so he's not gonna be moving. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to some motion stuff, but if you don't do uh, motion work with the Graston, 
you're only getting 40, 50 percent of what you're trying to do. Bend over and touch your toes a couple of times for me. Good. So now we're just putting the fascia through, you know, different different patterns to get as much of it as we possibly can. So back to, back to your point, there's really not a ton you can do for fascial stuff. Um, you know, the, the rolling doesn't really work on the fascia, it works more on the muscles. Um, you know, people just taking a tool and just start rubbing themselves, you know, think that they're doing something, but you really have to understand what the, you know, the problem is to redress it. People will usually go for the point of pain. The point of pain, for the most part, is really not where you know, where the problem is. That's usually the, the stress point that's being reacted to where the problem is. So I'm going to have you stand straight up and I'm going to have you do a couple of rotations for me. Anyone Spons. that thinks they're not going to get injured bodybuilding or playing any other sport is just being ignorant. You shouldn't expect to get injured or, you know, plan on it. But the human body is very weak. We're the weakest creatures pretty much on the earth. Our minds are very strong, but physically, a human being falls from a standing position and they break bones. You know, golf players have injuries and, and secretaries have, you know, carpal tunnel and arthritis. So you're lifting heavy weights and awkward movements. It can happen. So, yes, um, I have some tweaks, nothing major. But from years of lifting heavy, I have, I have some areas. So I, I focus and pay attention a lot to my body nowadays. And I work around those, those issues. Still feel it? No. Do it again. Everyone has their own story. And mine is, you know, I've been doing this for 23 years. I did this out of love and passion. Not a lot of people are gonna do what I did. I ate six meals a day, I trained six days a week without competing, without being on Instagram, without being on a cover of a magazine, just out of love and passion. Most people nowadays you see on stage, they're bodybuilding for a couple months, a year, two years, and they're on stage. So yes, those people, I see them pushing the envelope. I see them pushing themselves to, to acquire their, their gains faster. And when you do that, that's when you run into problems. It's, it's a meditative state, really. Uh, you really, really need to stay very, very focused and keep the goal in the mind's eye. And don't let anything deter you. 